I'll be demonstrating measure enhancements in version 5. So this webinar is for existing users and for those who are new to Danos dashboard. I will first give you an overview of Dandas and version 5, and then a deeper dive into the major enhancements and features for a live demo. We'll talk about the roadmap, the next steps, and then we'll open up the floor for some questions. Here's a quick overview of Dandas for those who are new to us. We've been in the data visualization space for over 20 years now, with different products, but always with one focus, visualizing your key data. Our vision is to help our clients make timely and better informed decisions through the use of data visualization and business dashboard solutions. Our platform, Dandas Dashboard, is a development platform that allows creating custom dashboards and report solutions. It is fully web-based, including the development process, which is done through your web browser. It is designed for adoption and allows you to create a business intelligence portal to keep your key performance indicator in focus. Here are the main advantages of Dandas solutions. With over 50 data visualization controls, we are leading in a quality and variety of visualization. The platform is super flexible and extensible in order to obtain the right customized solution to match each organization's specific needs. And while it integrates with many different platforms, it is extremely easy to integrate with Microsoft BI stack, from data sources like SQL Server and Amazon Services, all the way to the presentation layer if you wish to integrate with SharePoint. Beyond the technology, our client support is second to none and constantly scores high marks in customer surveys. And lastly, our consultants are highly specialized in data visualization best practices and providing better dashboard design, leading to higher user adoption, return on investment, and better performance management outcomes. So, version 5. Focus on the customer request. Version 5 is over 75 new features. Those are aligned across the following five themes. Big data consumption, the ability to connect and extract and visualize data out of big data sources. We have new advanced visualization options to consume your data in more efficient ways. We enhance mobile and cross-platform data discovery. Automated manual processes to schedule reports and delivery of the dashboard for better user integration. And finally, we've added the ability to track your dashboard user adoption and show successful implementation. Let's get started with those features in live demo. First up, big data consumption. In version 5, we've developed new data connections for Amazon Redshift, Hadoop via Hive, and more big data sources that allow you to extract and visualize some results of tens and hundreds of millions of records in seconds, making it possible to visualize this data with a quick dashboard load time. This new connection adds to a large list of supported data sources. Together with the Data Provider API, Dandas Dashboard allows you to extract data from any source and visualize it anywhere. For those who are not familiar with Amazon Redshift, here's a quick overview of the benefits. Amazon Redshift is a cloud-based data warehouse which is SQL-based. It delivers on petabyte scales. It is encryptable and easy to scale and maintain using a simple user interface that basically allows you to easily add more nodes into your cluster. It's very inexpensive in comparison to other big data sources. And from a dashboard perspective, the big advantage is that it allows you to query and visualize your big data in seconds. In this chart, you can see an example for a website's unique visitors hit count trend, which is extracted out of Redshift. This chart is also combining another target line source from an Excel spreadsheet. This means that you can actually visualize your big data next to other data sources on the same dashboard or even on the same chart. To find out more about Dandas and Amazon Redshift partnership, you are welcome to watch our Redshift video tutorial. In our continuous effort to provide advanced new ways to visualize your data, we have now added a new chart control for radar charts. Radar charts are good for visualizing data that is circular by nature, or for when you're looking for the symmetry of values rather than the magnitude. Let's see it in the live demo. Here are two examples for radar charts. On the left, I have a polygon radar chart visualizing web dating profile matching. 
in this case, the web, da the web dating website user logs into the website and defines the different characteristics it's looking for in a bachelor. This forms the shapes for the desired bachelor. That is the gray shape in the middle of this radar chart. On top of it, we've laid out different users, that the, uh, different profile users that the user is searching and trying to match. In this example, you can see that even though David's profile may be a bit richer or handsome, it actually doesn't match the overall characteristic that this uh, user is looking for, meaning that John has actually a better matching pattern to this required personality that we're looking for. So again, on these charts, we're not even visualizing the actual labels of the different metrics. All we care about is just getting the symmetry of the values and making sure it matches the right pattern that we're looking for. On the right-hand side, we're using a circular radar chart showing monthly energy, energy usage. At the top, you can see that during the winter season, this is where we have the highest consumption for the year. The summer is at the medium level, and then in the shorter season, this is where we have the lowest consumption of energy throughout the year. This kind of visualization is useful whenever your data is circular by nature. If I were to visualize this on the line chart, you would actually have a break in your chart between December and January. It may make more sense to visualize this using a radar chart simply because of the circular nature of the data. Dynamic APIs is another advanced data visualization option I'm really excited about. Using special filters, the dashboard users can now quickly change the chart metric and avoid unnecessary drill downs or pop-ups. Let's see the live sample. In this example, I've exposed the spe special filters across the measure, the dimensions, and the grouping field. Right now, I'm filtering on the average list price on the sell start date, and I'm grouping by the different class. However, the user can now quickly switch from one measure to another simply using those filters on the measure or maybe swap the dimension as well. So instead of viewing the information over the cell start date, I can now switch to the cell end date or even the modified date. In this example, I can see I have some values near the end of 2012 which are lower in scale compared to the values of March 2013. I can just select those values by zooming into those and focus on those specific modified date values. can zoom back out and change my dimension again. And on the right-hand side, I have the option to switch between the different grouping field filters. So maybe I want to visualize and group my information by the weighting unit measure, or by the size, or maybe by the class of the different metric. The advantage of using this type of visualization is that it really provides me the ability to switch and swap the different measures and the metrics on the fly, enabling the user to just focus on the right series it's looking for without having the need to navigate into another report or a different location. Moving on to our mobile enhancement. In version 5, we've added more options for the user to discover and interact with data directly on the mobile devices. For those of you who are not familiar with Standard Dashboard Mobile View, released in version 4, this is our HTML5 home view screen, designed specifically for mobile devices, allowing you to consume and visualize the data on the go. As you can tell, it is a combination of tiles that represent the most important information you need to see in a live manner. Those tiles are actually showing live data versus images. However, it also serves as a smart navigation system, and now allowing you to quickly focus on the business areas that require further attention simply by clicking on a tile and navigating to the full dashboard that shows additional information and metrics behind that specific tile. In this example, I can quickly tell that the occasion category under my net sales is not meeting my year-to-date target. What I can do is simply click on this tile and navigate to the full dashboard behind this tile. Now I have additional metrics and more filters to interact and discover the data. I can also go back to my home screen and customize it to visualize only the tiles I need to see. So different business users using this dashboard 
can customize and define which styles they want to have on their home screen. For example, if I'm not interested in sales, I can actually remove the style altogether and the tiles will reorganize and align according to my new selection. I can even reorder the, the sorting order, so maybe drag and drop a certain tile to show as my main tile, and I can save that. In version 5, we've deployed a new type of tile, allowing you to not only navigate to the dashboard behind it, but also interact with the data direction on top of this home screen. In order to add this tile, I need to go into my Explore view, and under the Explore view, I can customize and view all the different dashboards that I have. In this example, I will add a new tile for the sales dashboard. And by going back to my home screen, I will now see this new sales interactive tile. This tile will allow me to interact with the data directly on my home screen. So, for example, I can switch to the occasions category, or I can switch from dollar to percentage and basically discover the data right here on my home screen without having the need to navigate into different dashboards. This allows me to combine both types, of, both types of tiles and interact with the data in the most efficient way. Another option to visualize and discover large amount of data on your mobile devices is using the small multiples control. The small multiple control lets you easily compare visualization by displaying multiple instances of child controls in the linear or grid arrangements. In this example, this type of visualization is similar to a trellis chart. I'm actually visualizing bar charts across different dimensions over different years. Typically, we'll see lots of users visualizing this kind of, this kind of information using stack bar charts. So if I switch to a stack bar chart, you can actually see that the stack bar chart is actually useful whenever I want to compare the total values across the years, or maybe spot a major contribution of a certain dimension within the year. However, it's still very hard for me to compare the values of the dimensions between the years or the actual distribution of the, those different dimensions in the year itself. If I switch back to the small multiples, you can see that using this kind of visualization, it's very easy for me to compare dimension A across all the years or the distributions of all my dimensions within the certain year. Keep in mind that this control is very dynamic, so based on the filters that you apply to the data, it will show different numbers of charts. In this example, I've applied a filter to show five years worth of data, but if I were to apply the filter for 10 years worth of data, you would see five additional charts displayed here automatically for that specific selection. Another example for how you can use a small multiple control is for heat maps. In this example, I'm trying to segment my campaign ads by determining which one will yield the best click-through rate. On the columns, I'm visualizing the number of Twitter followers from zero to all the way to over one million. And on the left, on the rows, I'm visualizing the age groups. The colors are visualizing the uh, low and high click-through rate. So light and bright colors will be the low click-through rate, and the dark blue will be high click-through rate. What I can quickly tell using this heat map is that no matter what age group I'm looking at, if my ads target groups that have more than 1,000 Twitter followers all the way to 100,000 Twitter followers, this is where I have my highest click-through rate. I can also tell that for all age groups, above 1 million Twitter followers will always have a low click-through rate. Another important insight I can get from this heat map is the fact that for the age group of 65 plus, the number of Twitter followers has less impact, and I can tell that almost across all, all values, all, all numbers of Twitter followers, I will have pretty much the same click-through rate. We are really looking forward to, see, to seeing what our customers will create using this dynamic control. The next edition ties back to a lot of new functi functionalities we've added around the reporting capabilities and better business integration that ultimately leads to better end user adoption. The main addition here is the new schedule option that is now part of the dashboard toolbar. This option can save you a lot of time by automating your reports as well as multi-page PowerPoint presentation delivery. Here are a couple of examples. The first example is for my daily sales report. This is a report that my sales manager are using on a daily basis 
They can filter these reports by different dates or different um, time tokens. They can apply that filtration for different countries, which are currently grouped by continent. And they can also interact with their reports simply by annotating information directly on top of it. In this example, you can see that the report has some logic that automatically colors and, hi and, and highlights different estimates value which are lower than the target. Or uh, there's actually here a small annotation that was already added based on the revenue trend. So for Germany, for example, if I have over that annotation, I can see that one of the sales manager added a comment saying, this is the third month in a row where Germany trend is decreasing. Some kind of a correction plan needs to take place. So this is a daily sales report I'm using constantly. What I can do in order to automate my business process is just schedule this report from the toolbar and create a new schedule. I can hit next, provide a name for this report, define the schedule frequency, so in this case I need it on a daily basis. Hit next, and I can now define the report file format. The default is Excel, but I can switch to different formats if I want to export into PDF or PowerPoint. Into the Excel settings, you can actually add new uh, options that we have in version 5. For example, the ability to include parameter values within your exported file. So I'm going to leave that on. That way I can keep the context whenever I'm reading that report. And once I hit Next, I can choose the delivery method. So I can send this uh, report into an email, or I can uh, create a file into a shared folder. I can define the recipients group that will be receiving that email. And I can also provide the email content. I will include a link to the dashboard. And once I hit Finish, this report will be scheduled and will be delivered automatically into my inbox. Here's an example of how this email can look like. So I'm getting an email from dashboard at dandos.com with the attachment of this report as well as a link to it. I can also unsubscribe for that email if I don't need to get it on a scheduled base. If I were to open this file, you can actually see that within the exported file you have the parameter values. And if you expand this column, you can actually see the month to date value results at the time the report was exported to you. So this will be uh, meaningful if you're opening an old email and you're not sure about what time that data actually includes. In the report itself, you can see that we're maintaining the formatting that you apply to the report in that in dashboard. So for example, the background as well as the uh, color of the uh, text within your cells is maintained, as well as the user annotations are also available to you within your Excel spreadsheet. Another new functionality we added around the ability to export and print your dashboard is in regards to the static nature of those exports and print that uh, you have outside of the online version, interactive versions of Dana's dashboard. In many cases, the interactive versions need to behave differently comparing to the static export that you get, when you get whenever you print this file into, into a piece of paper. In this example, we've actually added some events whenever I'm exporting this dashboard to control the user interface of this specific dashboard. So on the top right, I have a navigation system allowing me to switch from the executive summary dashboard to the store operations dashboard to the customer experience. And within my scorecard, I have a scroll bar allowing me to scroll down further to see additional location performance across those different metrics. However, when I export this dashboard, this scroll bar will be not useful for me. What you can do now is add and control those events to maximize the size of this grid whenever you're exporting this dashboard. So for example, if I were to export this dashboard, and in this case, I'm going to export it into my PowerPoint presentation. I can hit Finish and define where I want to export it to. So I'm going to just keep it in this uh, version 5 folder. Save. Replace the existing file I already have there. And my PowerPoint file is now successfully exported. I can hit OK and open this file. And the end result will be a maximized data grid where I don't need to use the scroll bar anymore because I can see all the locations. I have eliminated the navigation bar of the system of the, uh, on the top right side of the system to allow me to use that space and maximize uh, the amount of data I'm visualizing on this static PowerPoint file. I can now take this sheet into my meeting and report on all different location information without having to interact with the dashboard.
this type of PowerPoint presentation can also be scheduled for multiple dashboards. So I can click again on the schedule option and just append this say, dashboard into an existing schedule and just create a multi-page PowerPoint slide. Again, I can take this for my uh, weekly presentation. Here's an example for a uh, weekly meeting that I have for the regional managers. And I generated here a file that contains multiple dashboards or multiple slides. I already contains the information I need to prepare usually manually. Right now, it's done automatically using these schedule options. Last major enhancement is around the ability to track user adoption. Adoption is probably the single most important key performance indicator there is when it comes to BI tools. Studies indicate that less than 30% of BI tools are adopted by the intended end users. Starting from version 5, we now give you the option to track users and dashboard usage using our own built-in dashboard sample. Let's see this a sample. So this is actually a dashboard that we've built within Nano's dashboard. You can, deploy it, you can deploy it using the deployment center, and it will allow you to track the usage of the dashboard over different date ranges. So I can switch maybe from the last rolling seven days to rolling 30 days. I can filter by the different dashboards I want to look at or the different user accounts. On the top left, I can see the usage over time. So this will give me a trend of the total view time the users spend on a dashboard and over the number of views they had for the different dashboards. I can view this on a daily view, or maybe switch to weekly view. Again, I can filter by a different date range and focus on a specific set of time. And then on the top right, I have some key statistics about my dashboard usage. I can see what's the number one used dashboard in terms of number of views. So in this case, it's the uh, small multiple heat map dashboard with 19 views within the last seven days. I can see who are the uh, current active sessions I have in my uh, dashboard environment. So right now, I have two active sessions. Out of those zeros are floating sessions. Floating sessions relate back to the concurrent viewers that you have in your system. You can see who's the top user using your dashboard by entry count. What was the number of entries or views that you have overall in the last seven days? And how many actual users, distinct users, use your system in the past seven days? In the middle, you can see the breakdown about the dashboard usage, both <clears throat> about the usage both for the dashboard and the users. Right now, it's sorted by the top number of entries, but you can quickly click on that header and switch by the uh, um, worst dashboard used in terms of number of entries. And you can also see the trend in comparison to the previous seven days. Similar way, you can click on the average view time column and sort by the dashboard view time. So you can see the top views dashboard in, in terms of actual minutes viewed. And you can also switch to a scatter plot to get a distribution of those dashboards viewing over different entries and view time. In this example, you can see that most of your dashboards have pretty much the same amount of entries, around 10 entries, and pretty much around the same amount of average view time, which is around 100 minutes. However, you do have a couple of dashboards here on the right-hand side showing that you have less entries for those but higher view time. If you want to focus on those dashboards, you can just click on those, and this will filter the dashboard specifically to show information about the dashboard you clicked on. Again, you can open up the filters and switch back to view all dashboards. And then at the bottom, you can actually use the activity report and view the information about the actual entries and view time spent by each one of the users. This information can also be grouped by the different columns that you have in this report. So for example, if I want to group the information by different dashboards, I can just drag and drop the dashboard name header into this grouping header column. And now I can see the view time across the different dashboards. And if I want to focus on my executive dashboard, I can just expand it and see which user logged in, when did he log in, and how much time he spent on that dashboard when he logged in. So we're really excited to, uh, to see how the customers will start using this feature. Hopefully, this will add to the ability to improve the successful implementation and make sure the different dashboard users are using it as intended. So this concludes the uh, major five uh, version, the version, sorry, the ma major enhancements in version five. Um, where are we today? This is our uh, release timeline. As you can see, we're quite active, uh, releasing different minor and major releases, and we plan to keep on providing our customers with the unified content to the data. 
Where are we going? These are the main four areas of focus in order to support our vision. The first one, we want to keep on leading in data visualization solution. We're going to keep on providing you easier access to source data and reporting and analysis, improved support data for analysis features, and simpler ways to customize the information you see on your dashboard. Then we're going to keep on expanding on our cloud and uh, HTML5 mobile technology. We're going to provide you more features and more options to view this information and consume it on different devices, whether it's tablet, smartphone, desktop. We're going to expand on our cloud, the cloud and embedded de deployment, pr providing you the option to deploy the dashboard directly to the cloud through Amazon Web Service market Marketplace and consume data from the cloud as well. And finally, we're going to keep on listening to your, question, to your request. So what's next? Please uh, contact a, uh, our consultant. Uh, you're welcome to uh, get a demo or talk to a, uh, your account manager or solution architect to get a better understanding of how Dundas Dashboard version 5 can help you. You can also upgrade or charge yourself if you're new to Dundas by requesting a free trial. At this point, we'd like to open the floor for some questions. Mark Weavers, our senior consultant, will start this section by answering some of the questions you've already asked during the webinar. And I will take up new questions you'll be typing from this moment on. Okay, it looks like we have some uh, audio issues with uh, more connection, so I'm just going to uh, start by answering some of the, uh, uh, the new questions that you've uh, asked in the past few minutes. Um, so the first question is uh, regarding the ability to track the dashboard usage through a, a SharePoint web part. Um, so the answer to that is yes. You can definitely uh, use that dashboard within SharePoint as well. Um, SharePoint basically provides the ability to integrate um, standard dashboard in it using our uh, built-in web part. So the same way you'll be uh, viewing the dashboard and tracking the usage of the, uh, uh, of the dashboard directly in Dynos dashboard, you can do it within SharePoint as well. Another question is around the ability to use the dashboards on mobile devices as well. Um, so all the samples that I uh, showed you today can be used on the mobile devices using our HTML5 viewer. Our HTML5 viewer allows you to view the dashboard on any platform that supports uh, HTML5 browsers, so it, whether it's on your uh, iPad or any other tablet or any other, uh, uh, um, even desktop or laptop that has an HTML5 browser, will allow you to view the dashboard directly uh, on those. The next question is around the ability to uh, get the tracking dashboard. Um, so you can easily deploy the tracking dashboard using the deployment centers. Under the deployment center, there's a sample section. So the sample section will allow you to uh, just uh, um, double-click that sample, deploy it, and you'll have a new project deployed within your dashboard instance. You can obviously control the permissions for that uh, dashboard. So if you want to uh, provide access to it only to the administrators and hide the uh, uh, and 
prevent the, uh, the viewers of the dashboard. Accessing that dashboard, you can also control that. And because it is deployed with standard dashboards, you can uh, actually modify it as well and create your own specific dashboard to track your dashboard usage. The next question uh, is that about the ability to copy objects from one dashboard to another. So the answer is uh, yes. Starting from version 5, we uh, give you the option to uh, copy paste objects, um, any, uh, uh, any elements that you've uh, positioned on one dashboard that you want to reuse on a different dashboard, you can now copy paste and reuse those. Obviously, um, you can uh, keep on reusing the uh, templates and styles that we already had in previous versions as well. There's a question here around the uh, maximum numbers of points that can be visualized in a scatter uh, or a line chart. Um, so line charts are optimized to visualize a great amount of uh, data points. Um, I've seen some line charts with uh, over 30,000 uh, uh, data points in that day line chart. Uh, ultimately, uh, the limitation will be more around the uh, actual ability of the, the server to pull that information and send it back to the client quickly rather than the ability to render it on your uh, dashboard control. Um, Again, for any, uh, uh, any trend which is continuous, uh, you can definitely visualize the, uh, anywhere around the uh, hundreds of thousands of data points. Next question is about version 5 ability to uh, consume SQL Server 2012 tabular uh, analysis services a um, new model. So the answer is yes. Um, this was actually available starting from a, uh, one of the uh, minor releases in version 4. Um, so yeah, you can definitely uh, connect to a tabular uh, a model of SQL Server Analysis Services and visualize it on your dashboard. It will also give you the same functionalities that you were used to, uh, uh, used to be uh, able to use using a, um, the OLAP cubes on the analytical dashboard. Another question is about uh, Silverlight, that we're still using Silverlight. Um, the answer is yes, we're using both Silverlight and HTML5. Um, there's obviously uh, some advantages to using Silverlight, which is a bit more advanced than what HTML5 can do in terms of uh, rendering different visualizations. But definitely, we keep on extending both Silverlight and HTML5 to provide you uh, access to the dashboards on both desktop, laptop, as well as mobile devices. There's a question here around the ability to set up the connection to Dropbox or Google Docs Sheets. Um, so the answer is uh, uh, yes. We actually, uh, as mentioned, uh, around the big data source uh, connection, we do have an API that allows us to extend the different data providers that we use in Nano Dashboard. I believe that for Google Docs uh, Sheets, we actually have a sample on our uh, support site that they, uh, uh, you can use to uh, connect to Google Docs Sheets. For Dropbox, you probably need to uh, um, create a new connection. Uh, to consume that information using our API. Um, if you, uh, uh, if, if you, you don't have the resources or time to uh, create that type of a uh, provider using our API, you can definitely contact our professional services team to help you with that specific uh, provider. The question here about the ability to white label or OEM uh, down the dashboard. Um, so, uh, um, that can definitely be done. Uh, Dynos Dashboard, uh, uh, one of the major advantages is the ability to integrate and, uh, uh, and embed it within other applications. You can fully white label the solution, so anywhere you can see Dynos Dashboard logo, you can replace those with your own logo, with your customer's logo, and you can also integrate it with other applications, uh, making sure you have single sign-on, as well as a, um, uh, leveraging the existing user base of the, uh, the original application maintaining the same, same uh, look and feel, providing that the additional dashboards and the BI capabilities into your uh, existing application. There's a question here about how often is the data warehouse uh, updated? Um, so one important thing to mention about Dynos Dashboard um, is that Dynos Dashboard is using a live connection to your data sources. Um, so it's not, uh, by default, it's not actually um, collecting that information into your data warehouse and pulling that, uh, the information from there into your dashboard. It's actually providing uh, the latest information that you have in your data source. 
uh, directly into the client browser and rendering it on the screen. However, you do have the option to cache some of the information if that's needed in case where uh, you have queries that take a while. In that case, uh, you can define the frequency of updates for that data caching. So you can say that, uh, for example, a, uh, for a specific query, you need to, you need to cache it on a uh, uh, five-minute schedule base. And maybe for another query, you can schedule, schedule the uh, caching for once a day, depending on how often that data updates. Okay, the next question is uh, on the uh, ability to track the uh, dashboard usage. Uh, and the question is about uh, are we only tracking uh, by user account or can we also track Windows user groups? Um, so the answer is that yes, we can also track a Windows user group. Whenever an account, a Windows account, logs into the dashboard using Windows user group, even though it's authenticating under that uh, group permission, in that, uh, in that dashboard it's registered at the end of the day using that specific Windows account. Um, so you will be able to see that a specific uh, Windows account is logged in, even though you only use uh, uh, the setup of the Windows user group. There's a question here about the, um, the visualization the, um, and how, how, how much does it change based on the screen size and the resolution and availability on, the, uh, uh, on your mobile devices. Um, so the HTML5 home view is responsive to the uh, uh, screen size that they, uh, uh, you have. So for example, if you were to log in from a tablet device, um, you will see as many tiles as they, it can fit within the uh, uh, space of your screen. However, if you were to log in from a smartphone, obviously the screen size is smaller. In that case, the tiles will reorganize and position themselves one on top of the other. So you can swipe down with your finger and see more and more tiles. Within the actual dashboard itself, once you navigate away from the tiles and, and go into the dashboard, these are actually uh, um, changing their, uh, their uh, dashboard, screen size, the dashboard size based on the, the screen size that you provided. There's different settings that they, you can use to set this kind of a, um, size change. You can scale it up, or you can use a resize mode that will be a bit more um, conscious of the actual data that you, have, that you have on the dashboard. Different options around that, um, but definitely it will resize according to your screen size. There's a question here about the ability to use down this dashboard over SSL, over uh, um, secure data network traffic. Um, so the question is, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, you can definitely set up Donna's dashboard to, uh, to run under HTTPS uh, using uh, your SSL uh, certificate uh, and consume data from any uh, data source, including uh, Redshift, uh, for that matter. Okay, I think this uh, uh, wraps up the, uh, the, the major questions uh, that we had in the, in the session. Uh, for those of you who uh, asked some questions and uh, did not get answered in this uh, session, we'll get back to you uh, using email uh, after the session. Or feel free to uh, call us directly or uh, contact your account manager. Um, thank you for attending this webinar, and we look forward to uh, speaking with you. Thank you, and goodbye.